Is chlorine harmful for our plants and succulents? Watch the rest of this video and I'll tell you what some experts say. So you don't miss out on the next video, hit that subscribe button for me and thank you for visiting my channel. Disclaimer, these are my opinions after researching the subject of chlorinated water on plants. You must form your own opinion and take your own risk. I am not an expert yet. So when researching for this video, I knew I was probably in for a controversial subject. How many of us have not questioned the use of chlorine or chloramine in our water supply? I know we're all grateful for our safe drinking water and we couldn't have that without chemicals that are added to our water. Here are some recent headlines in the news. Lethal pneumonia outbreak caused by low chlorine in Flint water. This was February the 5th, 2018. The article was about Legionnaire's disease in 2014-15 that contaminated the water supply. So Stillwater residents also had an article which questioned the strong amount of chlorine in their tap water. Our water is tested and analyzed to kill off bacteria and other organisms that can harm humans. Sanitation of our water is critical. But what do these chemicals do to our plants? Chlorine or hypochlorite is added to drinking water in order to kill bacteria and other microbes. Chlorine is extremely toxic to these small organisms and water chlorination's primary purpose is to destroy any diseases that could be transmitted in our drinking water. Richard Restucia from JanesUSA.com wrote an article about how chlorine impacts plants. I'm going to read just a short portion of this article. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention tell us plants are not harmed by water treated with chlorine. Most of us have been watering our plants with chlorinated water for years and they survive. How does chlorine impact the soil? Chlorine kills some of the microbes in your soil. Colorado's State Extension Service tells us chlorinated drinking water may kill a number of microorganisms in the soil or a compost pile. However, the reproduction rate is so rapid that populations rebound in just a short time. In one study, researchers continuously applied highly chlorinated water to soil for 126 days. Two days after they stopped, the soil microorganism populations reached pretreatment levels at all depths of the soil. This is from Richard Restucia. Stay with me. I've got a tidbit I want to share with you at the end of this video. So most of us think our plants always look better after a gentle rain, and generally they do. The one reason is because the water is not chlorinated. Minerals and other additives can build up in the soil and have the potential to damage roots and cause some poor growth with chlorinated water. But at some point, all of us have watered our gardens and flower beds with water straight from the hose. That's chlorinated, and we've even drank from those hose. Our plants are survived, and we probably notice no difference in them. But we want our plants to thrive, not just survive. So rainwater, in my opinion, will always be considered best for plants. That is how they get their water in the natural environment. The same goes for our succulents and cacti. Naturally, they receive rainwater, and this is what they should be given. Although a drink of chlorinated water every now and then is not likely to cause them any harm, I would rather be cautious and use filtered water or rainwater from a catchment system. A rain barrel is good to have for water conservation and for our water bills. A water filter system is also good, but remember, if it's there just to soften the water, not just take out chlorine and contaminants, you may have to watch for salt accumulation in your soil. Reverse osmosis would also be a good choice, which many people who have hydroponics use a reverse osmosis system. Dave from davesgarden.com has a wonderful article called The Magical Properties of Rainwater. The heading of this article states, the non-scientific musings of an exotic plant nut about the apparent magical properties of rainwater over tap water, along with some general explanations. I will put a link to this article and Richard Restucia's article in the description box below. Check them out and I think you'll find some great information. I'm going to be using a rain barrel system starting this spring. 
I'll put a link to a system in the description box. If you have some examples of cause and effect, rainwater saved your plants or chlorinated water killed them, leave me a comment in the section below and tell me your story. One last tip that I want to share from my research for this video. Have you ever set your bottle of chlorinated water out on the counter overnight to let the chlorine dissipate? Well, you probably did that for nothing because that actually doesn't help rid your water of chlorine. You actually need UV rays from the sun to help start the breakdown process of chlorine. Just like in your swimming pool, after a couple of days you have to add more chlorine because it breaks down. So the best thing to do is set your bucket or your jug out in the sun for a couple of days and then use that to water your plants. So I hope the information in this video will help you in choosing which water to use on your plants. I'll see you in the next video on Garden Rudiments.